I'll be talking today about Gaussian splatting. But first, as usual, I'm going to start off with a video, which is going to be two minutes and we'll go over all the technical details really fast. Gaussian splatting. What's that? It's a way to render stuff really high fidelity, really fast. It's a big deal because it's totally different from any existing graphics pipeline and is capable of rendering scenes that look like this at 144 FPS. The original research paper is 3D Gaussian splatting for real-time radiance field rendering. What does that mean? I'll explain how it works. Step one, take a bunch of pictures of stuff from different angles, and then use an old algorithm called structure for motion to estimate a point cloud from the pictures at different angles. Step two, take every point in the point cloud and say, you're a Gaussian now. I'm a what? A distribution that looks like this, but in 3D and also can be skewed, which is what I like to call multivariate. Everyone calls it that. We also assign a color and an alpha. Now we can put all these Gaussians into one giant matrix with 16 columns and rows, one for every Gaussian. This is all the data we need to represent the scene. So are we done? No. no. Step three, rasterization, meaning turn all these Gaussians into an image. How? The simplified version is, according to your camera perspective, project the Gaussians into 2D, then sort them by depth. Then for every pixel, iterate over every Gaussian front to back, calculate their contribution to that pixel, then blend them all together. Now we have an image. So are we done? No. Part four, training. These Gaussians don't have the right values, so we need to train them, meaning adjust the values of the Gaussians so that they produce images that look like the original images. This is a lot like training a neural network, but with zero layers, which is why it's so fast. The training also uses automated densification and pruning, meaning when a Gaussian is struggling to fit a detailed part of the scene, it splits into two Gaussians and when a Gaussian's alpha gets too low, it gets removed. Now we have a trained set of millions of Gaussians that can be rasterized from any angle to produce an image. Okay, now what? Well, this is extremely new. It's kind of like when traditional rasterization was first invented and then Doom came along and added shadows and everyone was like, wow, you added shadows. And then came reflections, normal maps, indirect lighting, you know, the graphics pipeline. And this paper is basically reinventing step one. Now you may be thinking, isn't this the same as photogrammetry? No, because this is a rasterization technique, meaning it converts the underlying data directly into an image without the need for ray tracing, path tracing, or diffusion. So why didn't it exist till now? Because even though it's a simple operation, for it to look as good as it does, you need millions of Gaussians, which requires several gigs of VRAM. So is graphics about to totally change forever? Or is this a niche application like photogrammetry? Let me know what you think. And if you want to keep up with this more researchy stuff, follow me on Twitter. Thank you for watching. Any questions on uh, the technical aspect of Gaussian splatting? Because the rest of this is going to be more about the broader context. I have zero idea about uh, the architecture and uh, your you're saying it's like a neural network with zero layers. So like, I want to ask, how does it look like or like what's the operations? So they're just using gradient descent directly on the representation of the scene. Okay, thanks. Since uh, the implementation of Gaussian splatting, there's been a lot of community research work, which includes a lot of viewer implementations. Kind of the first thing the community started doing, these listed on the left, but they're not very user friendly. They usually have a very low frame rate. And the reason for that is there is a sorting bottleneck. So in Gaussian splatting, every frame, you need to sort millions of Gaussians, which is very expensive. The original paper solves this with parallel GPU radix sort, which is very straightforward with CUDA, but not so much on other platforms. Like on web, it can be hundreds of times slower. But there is one project that figured it out, which is Unity Gaussian splatting. I didn't pay much attention to this at first because the readme says like, oh, this is just code that's a mess that's been thrown together over the weekend. It's garbage, but it's actually by far the best one. And it uses AMD parallel radix sort, which is four times slower than CUDA radix sort. But the author of this repository made a bunch of optimizations that make it work pretty well anyway. And with this, there's been some very cool demos. Here is lining in Gaussian splatting and then this one is explosions in Gaussian splatting. But this is very technical, low-level graphics programmer people. It's not really practically applicable yet to a broader audience. And that's what I'm most interested in. And for that, another solution to the sorting problem is CPU counting sort, which is way slower than GPU radix sort. But if you do it asynchronously and you combine it with other optimizations from that Unity repository, and also use WebAssembly to make it faster, it ends up being pretty usable, which is what I used in implementing my own library, gsplat.js. This combines the Unity optimizations with WebAssembly CPU counting sort. Here's how it looks. I can pick something like this one. And you can see it runs really fast in the web. This library ended up being pretty popular. And I'm planning to add some more features, but the main priority is that it can enable machine learning demos. For that, I recently made a custom Gradio component 
This was actually pretty easy since the Gradio 3D model viewer uses a library called Babylon.js. I based my library syntax on Babylon.js so I could mostly just copy the uh, Gradio component and just replace Babylon with Gsplat. And it works pretty well. And that's this one. So it's just showing a Gradio component that implements the viewer. And then using this component, I made another demo called Dream Gaussian Mini, which is a miniature version of an existing research project called Dream Gaussian. Choose any image you want and you can generate the Gaussian splatting results. So what's next? Well, everything, because there's been a ton going on in the world of Gaussian splatting. It's all completely new. It's basically reinventing the wheel in a way that may be considered more AI compatible. So you can imagine there's a ton that needs to be done, like compression, animation, generative modeling, language grounding. But let's not forget about meshes, traditional 3D. This has nothing to do with Gaussian splatting, but it's very important in the broader context. The reason why Gaussian splatting is interesting as opposed to meshes is that there's been a lot of research going on in traditional 3D and meshes, but the actual step of constructing the meshes from images or volumetric representation has been the same since 1987. It's been the state of the art is still marching cubes, which produces pretty much unusable meshes unless you're a very skilled 3D artist that can clean up the meshes and then even then they could probably make something better on their own. And Gaussian splatting, on the other hand, is easy for AI to generate. But on the other hand, there's a lot of research that's been coming out very, very recently, like a week ago, that promises they figured out meshes. So, but the code isn't out. So we'll see. So long story short, 3D is very exciting. Everything is in flux and nobody knows where everything will actually settle. In the meantime, we have a huge opportunity to be at the center of all this research for both Gaussian splatting and traditional 3D. So um, stay tuned.